Hey, what's up guys? John here. California now prepares to turn sewage water into drinking water, consumable water. Millions of Californians could soon be drinking sewage water. Water recycling process, some call toilet to tap. Now you might say, John, that's crazy. But look, this is for the environment. <laughs> this is for the environment, they say. That you need to drink your own sewage. What the, I didn't have any corn. But when you see what they're doing, I mean, this is LA Times, by the way. So this isn't like some fly-by-night, you know, third-party website. LA Times telling you, you're drinking your sewage. But when you see what's happening past this, you're going to start to see everything is changing. The former America that we once knew is behind us. We're walking into this new normal, and in this new normal, everything is going to change. Real estate values, property values, transportation, food consumption, everything is changing right now. And you need to be prepared for this. You need to understand where we're going so you can make smart, forward-thinking decisions. Because if you do, you'll be a part of the 1% that's in the know. The 99%, they're ignoring what's factually happening. They're ignoring these new laws, they're ignoring these new changes, and they're gonna get blindsided by it when it hits them like a freight train. Now, I'm gonna show you exactly what's going on with facts, of course. Please hit the like button, hit the like button, YouTube will share this content to educate more people about what's going on in the US economy, and if you'd like to fix your credit to position yourself for what I believe is gonna be the greatest wealth transfer, the greatest transfer of assets we've ever seen before, start to unfold over the next 24 months. You're gonna need great credit to get funding. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item under credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com, click the link in the description just below this video, schedule a free strategy session. Take a look at this. So California prepares to transform sewage into pure drinking water under new rules. California is set to adopt regulations, and this came out yesterday. California is set to adopt regulations that will allow for sewage to be extensively treated transformed into pure drinking water and delivered directly to people's taps. The regulations are expected to be approved on Tuesday by the State Water Resources Control Board, enabling water suppliers to begin building advanced treatment plants that will turn wastewater into sources of clean drinking water. The new rules represent a major milestone in California's efforts to stretch supplies by recycling more of the water that flows down the drains. We're creating a new source of supply that we previously discharged or think, <laughs> thinking of as waste. Yeah, who would think of it, toilet water, I mean sewage water, as waste? It's disgusting, right? This is absolutely crazy. This is what's happening, though. I mean, this is what is happening. When you look at how fast this is moving, this came out today. Leaf blower bans are a win for climate, but small businesses are struggling. Now, they go on to interview this small business owner in Pasadena. He said the batteries are so they're so expensive i mean he was quoting 2600 bucks uh is what they were charging for uh for a leaf blower 2600 and uh you know the former the former models are 600 bucks and the electric models are 2600 he says look we can't carry them and after two hours they run out of battery so i'm either going to leave the business or i'm going to uh you know, I'm just gonna have to sell my equipment and uh, join somebody else, work as an employee, somebody else. This guy's worked in this industry his entire life. He was hoping to hand this business off to his son. That looks like that's not gonna happen. But look at what's happening here. Mayor ba uh, Karen Bass, right? This came out, you know, December 12th. The dates are important. So you can see how quick this is moving. This is the last 10 days, right? Mayor Bass highlights steps towards building greener Los Angeles during first year in office. Hundreds of millions of dollars secured through a locked armed approach in Los Angeles continues to be urgently led on climate. We're building a greener Los Angeles with urgency that crisis requires. So what this is gonna mean is mandatory property upgrades, taking your property off of fossil fuels and electrifying it, putting solar in, heat pumps, you know, making sure the envelope, the building envelope, the stucco, you know, because a lot of these buildings are 1920s construction, making sure the stucco is holding in the energy, making sure that everything is up to the new codes. This is not going to be cheap, but this is going to happen. I mean, this is what's going to happen. This is going to be, you know, residential buildings right here, right? So they want to electrify the transportation, decarbonize power generation, and reduce greenhouse gas across commercial and residential buildings. Now, when you look at, I mean, everything that they're doing here, they're going to be, uh, you know, decreasing water, decreasing waste, right? Decreasing waste, purifying Los Angeles water, uh, creating more equitable Los Angeles for all. So you have to read between the lines, not, head the, not read just the headlines. Rain caps are electrifying the transportation system. 
Um, and I'm going to show you specifics so you can see what this actually means here. Increasing energy affordability, uh, I mean, progress towards running with 100% clean power. The, the entire grid is about to get restructured. You have to ask yourself, if you have top insurance companies that are pulling out of Los Angeles and you have a very, very, very expensive place to live and you have all these newfound costs with record high you know, mortgage rates, how are people going to be able to borrow money to do these changes, these improvements? I don't think a lot of them are going to be able to do it, especially considering that many people that invested in real estate the last couple of years are buying three caps, four caps, five cap deals, deals that barely made any sense. Now they're going to walk into an environment where they have to refinance into this market and do these upgrades. Uh, you know, they're going to look, look, I'll show you this. So, so you can kind of get an idea. This shows you Los Angeles and what the plans are. So here's, uh, you know, they have zero waste accelerator, right? Cities towards unions to call for actions, clean air accelerator, clean construction accelerator, divesting from fossil fuels. So if you look at what divesting from fossil fuels looks like, uh, you know, make a commitment to increase our investments in climate solutions and the green economy and divest municipal investments from fossil fuels. Encourage the city and other relevant pension funds to develop a policy to buy us from fossil fuel companies as part of a wider climate management. Encourage the city and other equivalent, right? But look at this and you click on what we do and you click on, you know, buildings, uh, let's see here, um, energy and buildings, you will see right here, implementing and enforcing building energy regulations and mandatory performance standards for existing buildings. What does mandatory existing standards and enforcing mean? It means that, you know, things are about to change in a, in a really big way, including measures to reduce embodied emissions in buildings with benchmarking, whole life cycles, incentivizing, implementing citywide actions towards grid decarbonization. I mean, this matches up like directly with what lacity.gov is saying. So this isn't like some, you know, the sources matter. This is what they're saying. This is factually what's happening. It might be hard for a lot of people to understand, but this is factually what is happening. Now, when you look at what's going on with trucking, this is all by 2024, right? So we're talking two weeks, January 1. This is when things are, start, are going to start to get real. Truckers are caught in the front line of California's EV push. Now, when you scroll down here, I'm not going to make you read all this. The startups of California have a lot of work ahead. The State Energy Commission has estimated it will need 157,000 more chargers dedicated to medium and heavy duty trucks in the next six years to target. That would be required by building more than 450 every single week. The state needs to install a biblical amount of infrastructure. I mean, you think about this, 1.7 billion for medium and heavy duty truck charging in the next, basically the next two years. Business owners, can take advantage of the state and federal incentives by offset the price of these trucks and charging infrastructure. I mean, these trucks, by the way, they're quoted uh, somewhere in between like the three hundred to four hundred thousand dollar range for a new truck. And when you charge one of these trucks, you're not charging it. You know, like when you fill gas, you're in and out in 15, 20 minutes. You're you're gone. You're down the highway onto the next drop off. When you're charging an electric truck, you might sit there for eight hours, ten hours, twelve hours. You're not getting the same range. So all those costs are going to be pushed onto the consumer. The trucking company is going to take on these newfound costs. If they can afford to stay in business, they're going to push on the cost, right? So structurally, what's going to happen is a complete overhaul of supply chains. That's what we're walking into. Now, that might sound far-fetched, but if, if that sounds far-fetched, look at this. NBC News, right? NBC, Los Angeles, this is what they're saying. LAPD moves to accommodate new DACA officers who can't personally own um, that, right? So this came out seven days ago, December 11th, and uh, the new LAPD plans to adjust its policies this week to empower some of its newest officers who are also DACA recipients to possess the department issued. So this is people that came from different countries coming to America now uh, in Los Angeles that are now going to be uh, police officers. So federal law would generally prohibit such a person who is in the U.S. under deferred action for childhood arrivals immigration policy from possessing one of these or this but by LAPD making their off hours part of the performance, other official duties or other law enforcement purpose, these officers would be allowed to carry these while away from work. According to, the, uh, you think about this, they're coming from a different country here in America. You know, if you commit a felony when you are 18, 19 years old and you want to be a cop 20, 30 years later, I mean, that's on your record. That's on your record. The odds of you becoming you know, a police officer are basically going to be close to zero. 
But if you come from a different country and you have no record, you start with a clean slate here, you know, you might end up getting a couple people that maybe you shouldn't have, right? Uh, conservatively speaking, right? You might be able to get a couple people on the on the force that maybe you shouldn't have. But when you have a no cash bail system in LA where it's a catch and release and the you know the consequences of committing a crime are greatly reduced, and you're out there and you're basically patrolling the street, I mean, I think it'll be interesting to say the very, very least. We've sought information from our federal and state city attorney to understand what does the policy need to discuss to articulate the basis of which DACA individuals, now a police officer, can lawfully carry and possess. This is from the LAPD uh, chief. Federal and state law allow DACA individuals who are not in U.S. residents or citizens to possess that. Now, am I saying it's, uh, you know, they shouldn't, I'm not taking a position. I want to be very, very clear on this. I'm not taking a position. What I'm taking a position on is everything that we once knew is uh, changing very, very rapidly, very, very quickly. All of you know what America once was is getting completely overhauled, everything. And I personally think with this overhaul, we will see a lot of wealth get pulled out of a lot of people's pockets and restructured in the system. And if you have the knowledge, you understand what's happening structurally, you understand what these property upgrades are gonna look like, you understand what these new requirements will be in the next six years, and you're buying deals based on the cost to do these improvements, and you're looking to pick up a lot of distress, you'll probably be a lot better off than most people that are ignoring you know, factually what's happening in this real estate market, this economy. And that's, you know, that's the hard truth. When you're looking at all these things, you know what I think is gonna happen is we're gonna start seeing a lot of wealthy people in California say, ah, you know what, I'm gonna have my own water filtration. I'm gonna have my own system. I'm gonna have my own pumps. I'm gonna have my own, you know, this and that. They're gonna have their own plants. They're not gonna be drinking this water. You think the rich in Los Angeles are gonna be drinking this? No. You think they're gonna be showering, showering in this? No, they're not. They're gonna get in front of it. And that's why I advise all of you. If you're thinking about doing business in Los Angeles or in San Francisco or California, you have to be forward thinking and look at the problems and get in front of them before they become a problem to directly impact you. And if you can't get in front of it, you know, at least you have that information. You can make a smart decision, maybe a pivot, maybe a move, maybe do something else. What do you think about this situation? You think this is a good thing, a bad thing? Drop below, let's have a conversation. If you'd like to fix your credit to position yourself, what I think is going to be the greatest wealth transfer in American history. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item on your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free strategy session. Catch you next video.